welcome back. I am Statman Dave and this is three talking points of Manchester United's trip away to Newcastle in the Premier League. If that's not a reason to like the video, I don't know what is. Smash that like button right now and of course subscribe if you are new. Without further ado, let's get this party started. First up, we've got to talk about the Chris Smalling situation at Manchester United. For me, Smalling should be maybe pushed to the side of the squad and Victor Lindelof needs to deputise. Chris Smalling had a terrible afternoon at St James's Park. Not only did he dive and give away a free kick that led to the Newcastle goal, but he was rash in a number of other situations. The free kick he gave early for a handball looked like he couldn't really control his arms. Then the foul on Dwight Gale that should have led to a Newcastle penalty. Smalling was very, very poor in defensive situation, but what was worse, I thought, was when he was on the ball. Smalling, unfortunately, has, has been sort of glued into this Lou Van Gaal mentality of playing safe, easy passes. Smalling starred as Mike Smalling under Lou Van Gaal and was a very good defender in terms of playing high, coming out with the ball, but playing simple passes, driving into midfield and then playing it square. It worked for Lou Van Gaal's Manchester United because that's what the Dutch tactician wanted United to do, be safe in possession, arguably starve the opposition of the ball so they couldn't attack United. The problem with this new United under Mourinho, it's a different United. United need to transition the ball a lot quicker. And unfortunately, with Chris Smalling as a centre-half, it doesn't quite go that way. But if we break down his passes for Newcastle United, it paints a really interesting sort of story of Chris Smalling's game. In terms of what I want for Manchester United, this current United team, I'd like them to be quite direct out of the back. I'd like them to fire balls into the feet of Romelu Lukaku, then Lukaku lay the ball off to the central midfielders in the 4-3-3. You know, a lot of the good teams in Europe right now, the teams are massively overachieving, the likes of Hoffenheim. You know, use a target man, use a pass into the feet of the striker, a little layoff, a Sort of the central midfielders become attacking midfielders in between the lines, and then you're in a great situation in an attacking sense. I want to see that more from United. But with Chris Smalling in the side, you're just not going to get that. Smalling failed to complete a pass to Lukaku in the entire 90 minutes. What's more worrying is that between the front three, Martial, Lukaku, and of course Alexis Sanchez, Chris Smalling only completed three passes to those three players in the entire game, which is pretty poor. But also if you consider passing into midfield, something that you should be doing as a centre-half. Picking the ball up, drawing some pressure, playing it into midfield. Smalling only completed six out of those 50 passes into midfield. In fact, if you look at the stats, 58% of Chris Smalling's passes against Newcastle United were two defenders. And the most worrying part is 14 of those passes was to his partner at centre-half in Phil Jones. And then 14, of course, were to Antonio Valencia on the right-hand side. For me, this is not what United need to do at the moment. So frustrating. So, so frustrating. But one guy that could come in and instantly improve United out of the back would be Victor Lindelof. Victor Lindelof is a fine defender when the ball is at his feet. I'd say he's United's best defender when the ball's at his feet. The times that I've gone to see Victor Lindelof live, I've been so, so impressed with how he can carry the ball out of the back, confidence, and then play in between the lines. You're just not going to get that from Chris Smalling. When I spoke to Rio Ferdinand in an interview I did with Full Time Devils, Ferdinand spoke about passing stats. And he spoke about how, what are you actually doing with the passing? Yes, you can complete 50 passes in a game, but are you playing passes that are breaking the lines? Are you playing difficult passes? And that is not what Chris Smalling does. He doesn't play those passes. Victor Lindelof, though, completely does that. He's the guy that's going to step up and play the pass into Lukaku. And then United are in the final third. And that's what United vitally need. I understand that Victor Lindelof isn't the complete defender yet. You know, he's, he's not very good when he's up against a physical player in terms of aerial situations. You know, he got dominated a little bit by Glenn Murray against Brighton. Richardson uh, did quite well when the ball was in the air against, um, of course, the Swedish centre-half. But what I think he is so good at is, you know, is that ball playing. But also you look at the games that United won in the period where he played four games in a row starting for United. They beat Watford away from home. An absolutely fantastic display there, the 4-2 win. And of course the 3-1 win against Arsenal. In both of those games he was up against, you know, Richardson and of course Alexis Sanchez. And I'd argue that Victor Lindelof won both of those duels in terms of the overall game. You know, when the ball's going to the feet of those attacking players. It was very aggressive, stuck touch tight to them. But he has that pace as well. And that's why United could press so well at the way at the Emirates. Because they knew that that 1v1 situation, of course Victor Lindelof up against Alexis Sanchez, Lindelof can cover because he has that pace. And I think going forward, Victor Lindelof needs to start week in, week out for United. Of course, it's going to be Eric Bay. He's the starting centre-half. He's been a bit injury-prone over the last you know, 18 months and he needs to get fit again. But I think the best partner at Manchester United at the moment is, of course, Victor Lindelof for the Ivory Coast International. On to number two, we've got to talk about Anthony Martial, who had three massive chances in the game and arguably should have won it for Manchester United. I think the thing with Anthony Martial, he is playing sort of out of position now. At the moment, for me, Anthony Martial is a left winger. He's 
he's very good at receiving the ball to feet and taking people on and making things happen. He looks a bit lost on the right wing at the moment, and I think that's where he needs to develop his game next. What I want to see from Anthony Martial on this right-hand side is hitting the byline, like he does on the left wing. You know, at times on the left wing, he'll go on the outside of defenders and almost like tiptoe down the, the sort of byline, keeping the ball really good body balance. I want to see that on the right wing, doing the same thing, going around defenders and then looking for the cutbacks. Not enough from that from Anthony Martial. But in terms of his finishing, there's areas where he needs to improve. I feel like he's got one sort of technique when it comes to, you know, putting the ball in the back of the net. That's opening himself up onto his right foot. Works very well coming in from the left wing because that's the sort of finish that you want. You know, curving it outside of the post, curling it in. Works so well. But on the right-hand side, as we saw for the chance that Nemanja Matic created for him, again, some fantastic hold-up play from Lukaku, layoff Nemanja Matic playing the ball through, and then Anthony Martial, one-on-one -on -one with the Newcastle keeper, going for the side foot again, opening his body up and going for that side foot. What I want to see there is more variation. I want to see finishes with left foot, I want to see finishes that are driven across the keeper, because that's what he should have done in that situation. He should have gone with power over that opening his body up, because it was too easy to telegraph from the keeper. If he'd gone low across the keeper um, with his right foot, striking it hard that is again where United could have got that one goal lead and would have been crucial United would have won that game easily moving to his other chances the header again Lukaku doing some brilliant work in the channel um, brilliant feet cross the ball to Martial Martial heading over if Martial wants to be on the level of uh, you know the other Messi's the Ronaldo's that top level which he has the talent for needs to work on you know his heading again it's a big thing in the game Cristiano Ronaldo wasn't great at heading the ball when he came to United but he left United scoring goals like he did against Roma towering headers I want to see that from Martial you know he should have got that on target should have scored that goal That's two goals that Martial potentially should have scored against Newcastle and the final one that Martial should have put into the back of the net was the when the ball dropped landed to him in the six yard area the two chances the two blocks off the line maybe roofing it smashing the ball into the roof of the net could have been a good option there but again Martial needs to work on his finishing and I think it's a big thing for Anthony Martial's improvement is learning how to finish from sort of every single angle, from position inside and outside the penalty area. So he's deadly. So he's got those tools to put the ball in the back of the net. Something that Carlos Quiroz did with Cristiano Ronaldo, you know, taught him how to finish from everywhere, worked on it again and again and again on the training pitch. And I think Anthony Martial could do with that, need a little bit more variation in his finishing. And to finish things off, we're going to talk about Romelu Lukaku, who had a fantastic game with the ball at his feet and arguably should have had a brace of assists if his teammates could flame in finish. The big Belgium is a wonderful footballer. Something that I highlighted before he joined Manchester United was I want to see more of Lukaku coming off the centre-backs and getting involved with the play. His first touch in those situations is fantastic and his range of passing is massively underrated. You take the first pass that he put, pulled against Newcastle, it was an unbelievable ball, you know, receiving it and then switching it out to Sanchez with the left foot. Then making that move and getting into the penalty area after Sanchez you know, beat Yedlin with a lovely little jink inside. Lukaku's shot was blocked, but again, it shows his range of passing. Lukaku, not only did he play some unbelievable Unbelievable passes when he had his head up, but his link up play was fantastic with the one touches. And again, it's something that I think Lukaku needs to keep doing more and more and more is those little layoffs. Absolutely perfect. You take the chance that Anthony Martial was created, the, the Matic through ball, all came from Romelu Lukaku receiving the ball with someone behind him, little layoff inside to Nemanja Matic. Matic through ball, again, Martial clean through, should have scored. But that overall build up play is what we've seen from United. United need to link more with Lukaku. They need to play more balls into his feet. I don't understand why they're not doing that. Because whenever the big Belgium gets the ball, either when you know with play ahead of him or the layoffs with someone behind him, he's linking with his teammates so well. I don't understand why United aren't being more direct. You know, bringing Victor Lindelof in there is going to be a great first step to being more direct to Lukaku. I'd change United to a team that plays through Lukaku and plays through Sanchez. Gets the ball and very, very, very direct. Getting into the final third and then linking with his teammates. The two assists as well that Lukaku should have got. The ball to Alexis Sanchez. The unbelievable pass in between the centre arms. You know, great play. Something that Lukaku has in his locker. Waiting for the right moment. Sliding Sanchez through. Sanchez rounding the keeper. Then shot fainting when he probably should have pulled the trigger. And then obviously Lejeune gets back and makes the block. But great play from Romelu Lukaku. Shows what he can do on the ball. Even if you're playing balls into the channels, Lukaku can make something out of that. Think of the chance that he created for Anthony Martial. The header that Martial again headed over the bar. Lukaku receiving the ball in the channel. Lovely work. The cross. Again, Martial's got to score that. But see what I mean here is that you've just got to get Lukaku involved in the play a lot more because he creates things. You know, his assist record in the Premier League is fantastic for a centre-forward. 
And I think United just need to build a team around Lukaku and Sanchez. A more direct side that's going through the thirds a lot quicker. Too slow round the back against Newcastle. But anyway, guys, I've been Statman Dave, of course. Like the video and subscribe if you are new. Till next time, over and out. See you later. I've been the Statman.